everybody. Thanks for joining me today. So finishing up the ocean part that is in this pass. Getting closer to working on the peacock again. There'll be a bit more ocean to uh, show up in the next pass. And uh, yeah, there's not very many colors in here. They're kind of forming almost stripes, so it should go pretty quick. And I have uh, three sessions with you, including this one before the end of the month. So I should say that reaching 115,000 total completed should be no, no problem at all. Okay, so I'm going to sort of work down to about here, I think. I work across and then, so just the way the colors have been going, it sort of has made sense to, to work in that sort of a direction. So that's what I've been doing. Unless I might cut it off higher. Let's take a look. Yeah, maybe that is what I will do, actually. I might just cut it off right about here. Yeah, because um, yeah. Otherwise, I think I'm gonna have a lot of live needles. So yeah, I will change it. That's why I say I don't plan too far ahead, because sometimes once I start actually stitching it, I realize I found a way that actually might be more efficient. So that is what I'm going to do especially when there's a lot of one color, I find that, uh, yeah, it just sort of works better that way. So I can carry another strand across for those other stitches. Either that or if I wanted to, I could kind of curve this bottom line here downward a bit too. That is also an option rather than going across a, a larger area. Although those are, that is another option too, if I wished to do it that way. So, we will see. Sort of, like I said, decide as I go. I don't wanna waste too much time sort of planning my path. I'd rather just be stitching it. <laughs> so yeah, we went to the dinner theater. That was fun. It, uh, the food was excellent. Last year we went and the food was good, but this year was, yeah, top notch. Delicious, so. And the show was fun too. It was, like I said, it was a murder mystery. It was called Wine, Cheese, and Murder, and I did figure it out. <laughs> at least part of it. There was sort of more than one mystery and I figured out, yeah, that one, so. Or at least I figured out who did it, not necessarily why, but I did see them do something that was suspicious, yeah, and I caught it, so. <laughs> yeah, they had a, a couple of the show must go on movement, uh, it's moments the um there were a couple of actors who who messed up their lines and everyone laughed and then we just kind of they went they went on with it again one guy he broke character and and laughed he couldn't help it and yeah and he just sort of went back in and we all just pretended that didn't happen so yeah yeah that's something with live theater right sometimes Things don't go according to plan, and you just have to keep on going. The show must go on. It's funny, because I was saying there's a Queen song, right? The show must go on. And I said, I wonder if they ever had a the show must go on moment, like during performing that song, right? Like, <laughs> that'd be so meta. <laughs> Not start off with a knot. That would 
suck. <laughs> I've got some darker areas here on the sea. I think could be the shape of the waves or something, yeah. Yes, that's what it looks like from here. Also, that part of the picture is intentionally sort of fuzzier and less in focus because, of course, the main focal point is the, the peacocks. So yeah, I did the same thing. I kind of, I cut it off here earlier because I didn't want to work over such a big area. So now I'm going to do the same thing, work out until I get sort of to that grid line there on the left and then, or on the right side, I should say, mixing up my rights and lefts. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, again, drop down, do another sort of section outwards. Yeah, there's another pink flower that's going to show up right around here, but I don't think I'm going to reach it for a while. Maybe by the end of the month, we will see. Yeah, I may have to move my frame one more time before it's time to take the whole thing off and show you my progress. We shall see. Yeah, it was funny. Um, we gave uh, one of my husband's co-workers a ride to the theater and he forgot his ticket. And we realized it when we were like pulling into the parking lot. He's like, oh, uh, you know, I'll pay for gas if we go back, whatever. And my husband said, well, you know, they registered it under our company name and we had our ticket. So we went in and sort of said, he's with us. We bought the whole table. And they're like, yeah, well, you have tickets to this table. If you say he's with you, then then that's fine. So they let him in. So phew, <laughs> didn't have to, uh, to go back because it was, yeah, that would have added like an extra 40 minutes. So that would have sucked. <laughs> I'm always paranoid about forgetting those things because I have forgotten stuff like that in the past. So now it's, yeah, I check obsessively. Like somebody says it's, you know, Cracks open bag to look. Is it there? Yeah, okay, it's there. Closes bag. 30 seconds later. Yeah, but is it really there? You know, opens bag to check again. It's like, oh yeah, that is totally me. Or I trained myself to always look back at where I've been sitting. When I get up off a, off a chair or something to leave, I always look back at the bench or the chair or whatever it was I was sitting on because otherwise, yeah, I forget that it's... um. I have forgotten things. And so now I'm obsessive about making sure that I have everything. Of course, now it's kind of easier because I don't carry a purse. So it's just sort of, I can feel that my phone is in my pocket. Yeah. And um, I put my keys on a carabiner and I attach it to my belt loop. So, yeah. Well, it started off, actually, I used to attach it to the strap of my purse because my purse was so big that it was hard to find my keys because yeah, they, you know, you put them in and then they were in the main part. It was like digging all over the place, trying to find them. And it was really frustrating. So for a while, yeah, I connected it to the strap so that it was sitting right at the top, but then I stopped carrying a purse. So now I connect it to my belt. So that, yeah. Well, and I said, like, if I'm shopping at the grocery, I, uh, I have them attached to me because often I'll take off my coat and put it in the cart but then that means it's not on me somebody could grab it and run off right so that way if they they run off with my coat all they get is my coat yeah there's no wallet or keys in it so yeah yeah you really want my cheap old coat fine <laughs> it's not a huge loss <sighs> yeah it's uh it's got a rip a little rip in the sleeve because i caught it on something walking past Luckily, it hasn't, like, run or anything, but, yeah. And the zipper on the hood's wearing out that connects it to the, um, connects it to the jacket. The snaps where it holds that in place are wearing out and everything, so, yeah. I don't think it would be high on anybody's priority list to, uh, to grab, actually. I'm gonna fill that in there first. Or 
or I used to sometimes when I put my purse in the cart, I would take the um, the little toddler seat belt for when your kids are sitting in and put that through the strap so it would be a lot harder for someone to grab it and run off with it. Not that anyone ever did, but you know, you never know, right? Yeah, paranoid, so. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, this piece is not very long, so what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start another piece from the left-hand side and have them sort of meet each other. Yeah. If that piece was really long, I probably would have taken it, carried it all the way down here and gone back, but it's not long enough for that, so I will instead add another and work my way towards it. Actually did start this session at zero today. <laughs> yeah, I swear, basically every day that I'm deciding to film has been very gloomy. So it's just cloud cover. I won't complain, it's not smoke or anything like we had for months last year because of the forest fires. Yeah, fingers crossed that this year won't be bad. Yeah, we didn't have a ton of snowfall, which means the forests will be probably dry. So we got to hope that we don't end up with uh, bad fires this year. Yeah, the thing is, even no matter how diligent humans are, it's not always caused by us either. A lot of them get caused by lightning strikes. Yeah. And one of the problems, too, is... We have a mountain pine beetle infestation that came from overseas and they don't have any natural predators here because it's a different ecosystem, right? So yeah, unfortunately, that means that they chew up the, the trees in the forest and they die. And then of course they really dry out because they're dead. So yeah, any spark and it burns out of control. Here. So yeah, I'm going to carry this here and then I'm going to sort of work in the stripes up and down along as we carry this sort of edge here outwards. Yeah, so still trying to sell a truck that our son drives. Yeah, he actually wants to have a manual transmission for because this is an automatic. I'm like, oh, I didn't know he can't really drive manual yet. He's practiced a little bit. And my husband's like, yeah, but he says he wants to, so <laughs> yeah. Well, I've heard they're better on gas, but yeah. I do not drive a stick. <laughs> Oh, it's just one more thing to have to calculate in my head, and my brain is busy enough as it is. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and he had me learning on his old truck, the one he sold to his dad, and apparently it's very touchy, and like his dad, who'd been driving, you know, manual for like 40 years, he stalled it. And I'm like, that's the truck you chose to you know, to teach me on, like the one that's so touchy, the guy who could drive manual and his sleep stalled it. Like, 
now I feel like, you know, annoyed. And he's like, well, yeah, but then if you learn on that one, that means all of them will feel easy, right? After that. But, uh, yeah. It's too darn frustrating. Oh, gosh. There was, um, my mother-in-law, he said she could drive manual, but just barely. And so he said one time she, she's driving to meet them somewhere and you could hear her for like, you know, three blocks away. And, you know, his dad's like, how fast is she going? And she's not, it's just that she was driving like 45 in second gear. <laughs> the engine was working overtime, right? And, and he's like, you know, what are you doing? She says, well, what? I got here, didn't I? <laughs> he's like, yeah, but the engine's going to fall apart if you do that. <laughs> um. Oh, dear. Mm -mm. I say 45, I mean kilometers, not miles. But, yeah, still. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny because um, my husband said he worked on, he worked at a gas station near the border for a long time. And there was a guy who said, why are people going so slow? Like the speed limit's 60. He's like, yeah, 60 kilometers, not 60 miles. Because 60 miles is like 120K. So yeah. Ugh. And like a lot of cars sold in Canada, we have obviously kilometers, but then we also will have the mile markers inside in uh, smaller print but so that you can tell right because yeah if you end up traveling to the states you can't necessarily do the math in your head so easily right and uh, but a lot of American cars do not have the same thing so they have no idea what 60 kilometers is in miles right so yeah Yeah, and that happened to one of our friends. She borrowed a friend's car, and then later she said, oh, your car engine starts to heat up around 60. They're like, yeah, that's because that's speedometers in miles, not kilometers. Oh, <laughs> she was driving out, um, like, not on main roads, so there was no sort of other cars to keep the pace. It's just she had no idea that that's how fast she was going. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or they have a, a muscle car at my husband's work. It's like sort of their mascot car, I guess. And um, it's, uh, it's a GTO. And of course, its speedometer is only a mile. So yeah, you have to be careful not to speed with it. <laughs> Ooh. Especially since like it's a racing car, right? Yeah, it's like built for that. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because occasionally we take it out for a drive and, um, and uh, kids will... We'll yell, you know, gun it as we go by and stuff. So yeah, it's it's funny. But yeah, it was um parked at our house. In the summer they park it at our house. In the winter it goes into storage because it's not a winter car, right? But in the summer we park it at our house because for a while they parked it at the workplace and somebody tried to steal it and there was no one around to hear the alarm. So yeah. So now it's parked at our house because that way usually my car's parked behind it, so there's you know. You're not going to be able to get to it easily. And of course, there's people around to hear the alarm if it goes off. So, uh, but um, uh, anyway, my when my when the last time that my husband's parents came to visit, yeah, they, they brought it out to show his dad. And our neighbors were like, oh, are you selling the car? It's like, oh, no, no, just showing it off. <laughs> it's a DTO and his dad has uh, worked as a mechanic for, you know, basically his entire working life. So, yeah, cars are his thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was actually our last visit with them before my mother-in-law passed away. And yeah, when my neighbor found out, she said, oh, wow, you know, I didn't think that your husband's mom was, was that old. I'm like, no, she wasn't. Yeah, it was definitely before her time. She was, yeah. She was quite young when she got married and started having kids. And so, yeah, unfortunately, we expected to have her with us for a lot longer than we did. Yeah, definitely wasn't fair.
Okay, and then this one, yeah. All right, so just sort of, I have two parts of this color, and so there's plenty what I'm gonna do with them. Definitely depends a lot on how long these are. But yeah, anyway, um, there's my husband and one other guy at work who can drive the GTO because everybody else doesn't know how to drive a stick, so. <laughs> oh. Plus, like my husband said, yeah, it's a very overpowered car, so you wouldn't want someone who's not um, experienced driving it because it's got so much power that, yeah, it could get away from you very easily, and you definitely don't want that. Because, like I said, it's a race car, so, yeah. But, yeah, anyway. So, my husband gets to drive it sometimes, so I had a picture on my Facebook one time, and I said, yeah, your work may be cool, but is it I get to drive a GTO for work cool? <laughs> uh, okay, so I think those four stitches will probably use up this strand here. it so that was my plan and then probably this other strand will run out in another run or so and then we'll have to start yet another yeah there's a lot of this color here because there's only like four or five colors here in this area and that's one of them Yeah, it looks like we are done with snow. I've been having previous years come up in my memories and um, and there's still been batches of snow, but we look to be done for this year. Of course, I've said that, maybe I jinxed it now. when the, the street cleaners will come out because after the last snowfall they have to come and clean all the sand and stuff off the road because they spray that down during the winter to give better traction on the ice but when there isn't any ice it actually makes it worse <laughs> yeah <clears throat> Yeah, it's prairies and it blows all over the place, so it's quite unpleasant. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, one of the work vehicles they have is a convertible, and uh, we went for a ride in it, but yeah, it was like minus 20, and boy, you couldn't keep it warm in there. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, and I said around here, I'm not sure how um, <clears throat> how useful a convertible is. You'd just be eating a bunch of sand. <laughs> yeah, it is very dusty and there's nothing to block the wind, so.
Oh, speaking of wind, that's what's making my window pop there. Yeah, so teachers have been on strikes for a while, so they had no extracurricular activities for a week. Back on again for the next week, so yeah. Because, yeah, my kiddo's been missing. He joined the esports team this year, but they haven't been having practices because of all the, the strikes, so... Yeah, hopefully they get things resolved because there's going to be a big tournament they go, they do. It's kind of interesting because they actually don't have to travel for these anymore, right? Because uh, they can play against other teams online. They do that for practice sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, my kids on the, the Mario Kart team, they have a few different games. That's the one he qualified for. And the, last year he was an alternate. This year he actually is a full member and not an alternate. So yeah, he was pretty, pretty proud of that. Or how far out to the right I get for this session. Because I may actually get far enough that I come back over and start working my way on the next sort of strip again. So yeah, I used to sort of work more diagonally this way in in stripes like that and now I'm kind of or strips like that and now I'm kind of working more horizontally just seems to work so that's what happens when I don't slide the needle down far enough <laughs> yeah it can okay I'll park this one down here Anything that's below that line, I'll just unthread or rethread it when I work across to it. And do the next, the next horizontal strip across. Okay, so nine eight. Okay. Let's see how long this one is here. Okay, somewhat decent length.
of this super bright blue right in the water there. <laughs> Used a lot on the peacock, of course. one more stitch out of that so do that one there sort of below that line where I decided to cut it off have another one up here yes yeah, so this is one I'm going to park down below and use it in the next sort of mini pass across yeah I kind of I work in passes across the whole thing 60 rows tall and then sometimes I end up working in little ones across as well but the colors sort of make sense to do that whoops slightly off. There we go. I find sometimes when I'm working on 18 count, I can kind of get away with piercing it, but on 14, yeah, it's more noticeable. So, well, I use two strands on both, so of course the 18 is a little ends up stitching up a little thicker with two strands than on 14 count. Yeah, I've had people ask, how do you get such a good coverage on 14 count with two strands? Like, I don't know, I just do. I also, I don't really like it too thick personally either. I mean, if you look super close, you can see some of the fabric, but yeah, when you look at the whole thing at once, you can't. It's all personal preference. I know someone who said they used four strands on 14, which, yeah, seems very thick to me. My fingers are sore at just the thought of pushing the needle through that much. Yeah. I think this, the more strands you use, the more they could get twisted around each other, too. So there's also that 
consideration as well. I think actually, I think I didn't come up quite correct either there. Yeah, that was slightly off as well. <laughs> I tell ya, <laughs> it's not my day. There, that's better. run out but I guess there's enough for one more so I'll get down there okay. oh dear This color, I'm going to have two strands because, yeah, I think it'll just be easier that way. There's a lot of this color here, so they'll all get used up. slacking off on taking my walks and I haven't been sleeping as well so I made myself do that this morning yeah it's kind of wild that a you know 30 minute walk could make that much of a difference but it definitely seems to
Oh, yeah, there's a knot there. I can see now. That's why this is sitting funny. Yeah. There we go. It wasn't a knot, but the way it was looped around itself, it had not pulled completely taut. So there was weird slack in it, which was going to make the stitches look funny on the front. the wrong thread. There we go. <laughs> Actually, looking at this, I think I can do it with one strand. Yeah. It's not that far apart will waste a lot of thread, so I think I will actually just do that. Start another one. I think I need to grab a whole new strand.
carry about an inch maximum and that's still within that guideline so Yeah, it turned out I could do this with one strand, so cool. I move the frame again the C area will be sloping the other way because it curves around the peacock's chest again so it will probably be following that curve again yeah with this pattern everything a lot of it curves the other way because the peacock is standing that way so I have adjusted my way of stitching to just go with the flow. So like I said, I could have decided to work across a larger area, but <clears throat> I found this goes a little quicker sometimes to sort of divide it into a smaller section. Well, this is why some people like to focus on one square of a hundred at a time. One or two squares of a hundred at a time works best for them. Because, yeah, when you look at the whole thing all together, it can get rather intimidating sometimes. <laughs> Got to break it into smaller pieces, make it more manageable. Yeah, I parked this one up too high. Yep, I did indeed. Should be right there. That's better. Yeah, that's one thing I find is because I don't leave gaps, if I park something like that wrong, I can usually catch it before I make the mistake worse. I usually catch it pretty quickly because... Yeah, when I try to stitch next to it, I'll realize something does not match. doesn't match then it means it's me that's wrong <laughs> the pattern is right and I am wrong So 
So again, I could choose to go all the way across and back, but instead I'm just going to do a smaller section, work this strip down way that way. because there's some smaller bits branching off from this big long line instead of breaking that line up. So I could have parked down here, they're about the same, but it's below that line, so I decided to park here so that I don't have to add a new thread Yeah, as I approach it. So sometimes that makes my decision as well. when I do that. Catch other threads underneath it. So this may be as far if I go over towards the right for a while. We'll see. Yeah, I think that may be what will happen.
there. Okay. Okay, I think I'll do one more. One more strand and then I think that will be where I will call it a day. So didn't quite make it all the way across and back, but quite a ways. Yeah. I think my next session might be stitching on the flower. So we see a bit of a big pink flower coming up. I'm not sure what type of flower it is because I'm terrible at <laughs> identifying flowers unless they're obvious like tulips or daisies. So all I know is it's a flower blossom. <laughs> yeah, there was the top of a bud that's coming up and then, which I haven't got to either, so. I might be stitching in pinks the next time I stitch with you all. Okay, so yeah, did pretty good. Actually started at zero this time, so 244. Pretty happy with that. 
Uh, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here next time. Thanks, everyone.